Hello everybody, E here. Welcome back to another episode of 31 Days of Halloween. I know it's very close to Halloween, probably two days or a day before. I'm not sure when I'm going to post this. Um, so I'm sorry to hit you with a negative review, but I actually thought I was going to love this and I didn't love it, but we're going to talk about why. Uh, but first, a word from our sponsor. A photographer stalks his latest obsession and gets more than he bargains for. Werewolves, berserkers, kitsune. From the most ancient times, tales have been told of people who transform into beasts. Sometimes they are friendly, sometimes they are tricksters, and sometimes they are terrifying. Within the pages of Were Tales, a shapeshifter anthology, you will meet them all. Featuring many talented contemporary writers of dark fiction and fantasy, including several Bram Stoker Award nominees and winners, also including a non-fiction piece written by Cindy O'Quinn. Many thanks to Bridget's Gate for sponsoring this episode. Now on with the review. Okay, so you already looked at the uh, the title of this video. I'm sure that I'm going to be seeing comments that I have no class, I have no taste, I have no heart. But I pretty much hated the entirety of The Haunting of Bly Manor. Um, and come to find out, Mike Flanagan didn't direct a whole lot of this. I think it was only the first episode. Um, I, I'm not sure how much of it he wrote. I didn't even check. Uh, probably because I don't want to be disappointed to find out he wrote he wrote the whole thing. Um, there are three people in this show that I enjoyed. Um, that was Jamie, Hannah, and Owen. I literally hated everyone else. Yes, even the kids. Yes, even when they were themselves. Um, Flora and Miles aggravated the absolute piss out of me. Uh, I couldn't stand that. Perfectly splendid. No, I, I couldn't stand it. Um, it aggravated me. Miles was just trash. Uh, it, it, even even though he had his reasons, even though they both had their reasons, I can't help it, man. I, I, I'm going to tell you the truth. I hated both children. Not the, not the actors, but their, you know, their performances. Um... And, and it's not to say that they were bad performances, and it's not what I'm saying. I'm saying the characters that they portrayed aggravated me to the nth degree. Uh, didn't give a shit about Danny. I probably, that probably would have uh, made my enjoyment, which is funny because Nell was my favorite part of Hill House. It's the same actress. So again, it's not the actors and actresses that I had a problem with. It's the characters that they played. I found Danny a very cliched, boring character. Um, I found, uh, let's see here, Peter Quint and Miss Jessel, uh, both to be very cliched, boring characters. I found the kids to be cliched, boring characters. I had nothing, I didn't like anything about them. Now, that being said, I am still at three stars. Here's why. I loved the final episode and I loved everything with Hannah and Owen. I would have preferred an entire season of just Hannah and Owen. I'm not lying here. I would I would love to watch these two characters on screen together, fall in love, and have happy and scary times and all that stuff, like a Flanagan-led series with just these two characters. I know that can't happen the way that the story ends, but I would love to see it. Um, I'm also a big fan of... I already like Rahul... I, I can't remember his last name. He was in Midnight Mass. He was fantastic in there. He's a completely different character than he played in this one. Um, I didn't even know he was British um, until my oldest told me that he had a, he has a Twitter. Um, and I went and checked out uh, his Twitter. Huge fan of that Twitter. Um, but the actress who played Hannah Gross, oh, she's fascinating, man. I had... She is... She, not only is she lovely to look at, she's lovely to listen to. I loved everything about her. So much so, I had to keep on glancing over at my wife to see if she could tell. Yes, I had a huge crush on Hannah. Huge crush on Hannah. That actress is absolutely gorgeous. And that's just my opinion. I'm not going to mess around. Of course not. She doesn't. She has no interest in me. She doesn't even know who I am. But that's what I'm saying. She's an absolutely gorgeous woman. I loved her her acting. I loved the character. I loved all that. Um, and I would have loved to have seen more Owen and Hannah. I was here for that. Jamie's character was very conflicted. I loved, uh, I loved the story about the flowers, all that stuff. And I believed that Jamie... I guess it's kind of a spoiler, but it's whatever. Jamie loved Danny. 
I, I believe in all that. The very last episode, I, I kind of called that. That was a very, very predictable twist, especially since those two characters sounded the same. Um, but it, but with, with Danny, I don't, I didn't care at all. I don't know what it is. It gave me absolutely nothing to latch onto other than she had someone die and she feel bad. <laughs> that's that's and then when that's all that I get from a character is their tragedy, is their trauma because not all, not every ca character is only not every person is only their trauma. I guess there's going to be plenty of people who argue that, but I disagree. We are our happy moments, we are our sad moments, we are a combination of everything. And when a character is just one note, it's kind of like uh and I don't want to go off on a rant here, but kind of like uh, the main character, Mar Marjorie, Mallory, whoever it was in Bird Box, she was pregnant woman. That's all she was. We got no other character development whatsoever the entire book. Now, that might have changed for uh, for Mallory, the uh, Ma Majora's Major Mask. Uh, what, did I literally, was I literally about to say Majora's Mask? Wow. Anyways, Marjorie, Mallory, Marjoram, whatever her name was, I don't know. Um, in the sequel to that one, we might have got more. I don't know. Uh, but I didn't read it because I hated the first book with a fiery passion. But um, here is it was some of the same thing. Um, I really liked Owen. He was a very dynamic character. He was more than his grief. He was more than just a caretaker. He had the mother character that, you know, he, he had to go home to every night. And then you had Hannah. And Hannah had a very deep you know, story with her, uh, her own tragedies, her own happinesses, all, all that stuff. And that's why I love those characters. And with, uh, uh, Jamie, Jamie was another one of those really deep characters that was not only tragedy. She used the horrible things in her life to become a gardener and made beautiful things. And there is character development. There's no character development in anyone else. Everyone else in this show is just trauma, 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 trauma. That's it. And when you, that's all that you have, except for the blessings that were Hannah and Owen, if that's all that you would have had, this, this would have been utter shit. It would have been. Um, because you need, you need a significant balance of those things. And you had that in Hill House. You had the comedy. And you had that in Midnight Mass. You had these balance, these balances. This one does not have any balance whatsoever. Not for me anyways. Um, probably because I hated, you know, but five sevenths of the characters uh literally hated like i did every time they came on screen i was like no get back to hannah and owen or or, or jamie without danny um unfortunately we don't get much jamie without danny but it's whatever uh anyway so that's how i feel about the haunting of blind manor i'm giving it three stars and only three stars because i was back at two after that oh episode eight was just utter garbage um a huge hour-long info dump of crap that I didn't, I couldn't care less about. And some people say it's their favorite episode. I don't see it. It's, it's whatever. My oldest said that too. Dan said that they thought that was their favorite episode. It's whatever. Uh, we, we can agree to disagree there. I don't understand it. But uh, have you watched The Haunting of Bly Manor? Please let me know down in the doobly-doo whether or not you loved it, whether or not you hated it, whether or not you felt meh about it, especially if you liked it, I guess. Uh, it's, it's going to come down to subjective personal things here, but because it's very personal, I just couldn't stand any of the, couldn't stand most of the characters. Um, but if you want to try and convince me, you can, you can let me know why you love those characters that I hated. That'd be fun. Let me, j let me know that down there in the doobly-doo. Why did you love the characters that I hated? Yeah, that's what we're going to talk about. But until next time, I have been E, you have been you. This has been another episode of 31 Days of Halloween. I'll talk to you guys later. Bye-bye.